What's up everyone? I'm Cobra Page from Cobra and the Lotus and you're watching DeBelly. Hi, this is Dave from DeBelly, and today we're at uh, the Marquee Theater in Tempe, Arizona. We're, so, we're going to speak to Cobra from Cobra and Lotus. Welcome back to Phoenix. Thank you very much. As we were talking before the interview started, it's been about a year, and I'm willing to bet you guys have done absolutely nothing. You've been sitting home in your closets, watching TV, catching up on Netflix, right? You got it. <laughs> Eating Oreos and chips and just lazing around. <laughs> well, actually, we do eat a lot of those things, but... No, we've been uh, touring a new album, Prevail 2. Congratulations on it. Uh, it came out April 27th, I want to say. Tell me a little bit about putting the record together. I think, if I recall from our interview just last year, it was in the can already, or pretty close to it at the time. Tell me a little bit about this record. Um, so Prevail 2 is the second half of the double album that we wrote um, all at one time in Denmark uh, two years ago actually in the springtime so it really is about two years exactly that this album was created with its other piece so prevail one and two are now finally released together and the thing that people don't realize is that the albums weren't picked until after all the songs were finished so it really is a kind of a way of the universe uh, the way these albums have unfolded the way they have because they all were created at the same time it's kind of amazing to think about that with the two records out together. It must be a little nerve wracking as a musician to have all this material waiting to come out and just, you're kind of hiding it from everybody. Yeah, I've been excited for the new stuff to be released, that's for sure. So it's nice that it's finally out there. Um, now though, it, it makes space to think about what's next and you know, <laughs> making more new stuff, so. Um, yeah, it's pretty wild though. A lot of people have asked if we updated Prevail 2 while it was sitting or did any reworking of anything and the answer is no. These things were totally signed, sealed, delivered to Napalm before we signed to them. And then they said, okay, this is, uh, this is it. Uh, you know, we're taking this band on. And then we split them apart and chose the order. <laughs> with the album, with this album sitting for about a year, did you have to refresh yourself on the songs or did you just have no problem just stepping right into them? Uh, no, actually, um, it took uh, a lot of, for me and I think uh, probably actually for everyone that was involved in creating it, a lot of practice to learn the new parts. And I know for myself as um, um, a vocalist, I did some more stuff on this album that was new for people to hear from me using different parts of my voice, different textures. Um, that took a lot more vocal training. Actually, Prevail 1 and 2 maybe really step up my my training game again with vo with vocal technique. So, uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been interesting because there's a lot of dynamics in our live performance now. Homework of sorts, huh? Yeah, it, it does. It's it's taken more control than I've ever required from our music uh, ever. But I want it to be good. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, practice, practice, practice. Uh, with the release of this album, you've done some things that um, they seem unusual to me, but uh, I'm sure they're commonplace, and this is where she's going to correct me, people, so pay attention. Japanese versions? Yeah. Talk about that. Uh, so it's commonplace that Japan always gets a bonus track, and uh, you can't get around that. You can't get around those politics. It's just always the way it is. So I knew this was coming. So the way we worked at this time so that everyone could experience all of the music we created, not just Japan, was the chain was on their first Prevail one. Oh. So that was their bonus. And then the chain, of course, came on Prevail 2 for everyone else here. And then we did Let Me Love You in Japanese. So, uh, and that was something I also really wanted to do was sing a Japanese song. Uh, so. Um, that's not a Japanese song, but it's in Japanese. Uh, and uh, we just took it to the next step and made a video for it. Um, that was the only way we could share that version with the world because 
it will never be available on Spotify or iTunes or anything for anyone outside of Japan. Were you somewhat fluent with the language, or did you actually just have to learn that song? No, I'm not fluent at all. I, uh, I actually, it wasn't just learning the song, it was working with a translator um, and rewriting the whole song so that it made sense in Jap Japanese. Oh. Uh, so when, it, when the Japanese version is actually translated to English, it's very different. It's not um, quite a natural way that we would say things, uh, but it's still very beautiful, but it's, it's quite different. Um, it was really interesting. I would love to do that again. Sometimes putting yourself, I'll refer to it as a cage, sometimes putting yourself in that cage forces you to look at things in very different ways, taking different approaches, and that creates opportunities to sort of reinvest yourself into a song, right? You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. I think that I've grown and we've grown, and I don't know how you can't grow from everything, every single thing. It was a new challenge completely, and... It was an awesome challenge. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned the chain. I thought I saw you ask the question online, did you recognize the song or would you have recognized the song? The answer generally is no for me. Uh, lyrically, yeah, I would have scratched my head a bit and said, where is this from? <laughs> Certainly wouldn't recognize the song as a whole. Talk a little bit about how you put that song together and how it, it changed so much from the original. Well, when we were in Denmark, we were really, really working on finding more pieces of ourselves that were going to sonically be different and us. And we wanted to infuse the album with even more of that and also update the sound a little bit um, so that we sounded like our generation. That was very important. So when the chain happened, uh, Martin, uh, who is a Danish songwriter and producer that was also working with us in the studio, he um, actually made the music of the chain completely different. So he came up with playing that riff that way. That was all there was, was this riff. <laughs> and then I got, a, I got a hold of it and I went to Pro Tools and I basically just made this wacky ass demo to take to Jacob where it like had my breath creating like noise and all these layers and I changed the lyrics a little bit and the flow and uh, you know the end is uh, acapella and I just made this crazy thing um, and brought it to Martin or not Martin Jacob and I still remember like Jacob uh, he kept like pushing it away like it was a joke kind of and it wasn't gonna happen and then it came down to our last day that I was in the studio and he thought we were just he was gonna do edits I was just gonna have to hang out you know because we were done and I was like the chain we're doing the chain you know and he he just thought it was so crazy um, and I said just trust me it's gonna make sense when I start singing and, and it's all taped together and so we did it and because he could not understand the demo I made right. uh, and they're pretty rough if you hear our demos like and you hear the demos that I make it's I'm not a an engineer I'm not interested in investing time into into that either so it, it's really bad usually and it's really rough it's really murky fuzzy <laughs> Everything is bleeding into one another. My vocals have over reverb uh, going on on them, and it's just hysterical. So it was it was really fun though to do that, and then come on the other side, and he was like, "Okay, this is pretty cool," and I was I I was so like proud in that moment. I was like, "Yeah." I, <laughs> now, in I swear it makes sense. <laughs> in, in fairness, most demos you're trying to capture a nugget. You're trying to capture that one moment of essence that's going to create the actual song. And it seems like you found it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it would be interesting to hear the demo now. <laughs> because it's basically that, but it's like terrible, you know, quality. It's uh it's so funny. And there's glitches and everything where I cut things and yeah but it's it's fun and um actually Jacob was really uh having a tough time letting me do all the all the things that I do with my voice because usually I layer and there's a lot of vocal noises all over the songs 
I was going to comment in listening to your music, there is a lot of you going on in a song um, in so many different ways, more so than I think most people catch. Absolutely. There's things that people won't even know was a voice. Yeah. And we've just we've just mutated it like uh, losing my humanity. There's that breakdown and there's me going, call, 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 call. And it's just all you can hear is this like metal rhythm, like subtly in the background that no one would ever probably pick out or know what it what the hell it was. There's probably a synthesizer that sounds like it, you know, but instead we just made these things. So it was very cool. But yeah, that's a lot of fun. Well, you've been out now on tour. Um, actually, you're coming toward the end of the tour. You only got a few nights. You only have a few nights left on it. Um, talk a little bit about the tour, um, Texas Hippie Coalition and, and how it's all been. Yeah. So, um, well, we've had a lot of fun, that's for sure. And we've had a lot of fun promoting the new stuff. Uh, the tour has been good and interesting, um, and uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of good people out here. That always makes things fun too. Um, so, yeah, I I don't know. I would say it's been a, a good and extensive U.S. tour. The sad thing is, it's becoming harder and harder to let people know about shows, and it's hard to even let your own fans know that you're in the city so we've seen a whole lot of like play in denver and it's like we were just there five days ago and um it, it that's been a really tough obstacle that's really come into my uh, my realm of awareness on this tour is just like how important it is to figure out how the new world works with promotion for uh mid-sized bands um because it's not uh it's definitely not happening on Facebook. It's it's not how it used to be. So that's been something that I've really uh, seen as like an obstacle. Um, but yeah, it's it's been really good. And actually, it's it's fun to be back here at the Marquee Theater because we did play this uh, a long time ago with Fear Factory. Oh, uh, cool. Yes, 2013. And I remember it was the first time I was ever in Arizona, actually, um, as an adult. And when we stepped outside, I was like, whoa, I remember, like, we parked right where we're parked right now, and I ran to the stage door. It was such a baby. I have been to Arizona so much since then. I just love it. But I had no idea, like, the kind of heat that could be here. And, um, yeah, I remember that very... And I had dreadlocks, so I was practically, like, a furry animal, you know, um, around my head. It was just... Oh. I have a photo on my phone. Uh, last summer, we came here to interview another band. And as I pulled up and parked out front of the Marquee Theater, my thermometer temperature gauge in my car said 122. Oh, my God. I think it was like that. It was one of those days when we were playing with Fear Factory. It was insanely hot. Yeah. And people are golfing. And I'm thinking, whoa, like, <laughs> how? Walk around in jeans and long sleeve shirts. and. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I would wear long sleeves in this kind of sun and stuff, but yes. it, it can't handle it for very much more than 30 seconds. <laughs> for, yeah, for a different reason, to keep the UVs off of you, really. That's, yes. you know, burn. Yeah, yeah. Um, last year when I talked to you, I spoke with you, um, you were pouring, pulling some crazy schedule where you're going home for about 10 minutes, and I mean that in a literal sense, maybe a day, and turning around and heading to Europe. And if I looked at the schedule correctly, you're doing this again. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, we're literally um, going home for one day. The tour, though, is not very long in Europe. Yeah. We will be very tired, though. I know that. After this turnaround of events, our bodies will be very confused. It won't be the first time, though, so, you know, we know what's coming psychologically. I don't know. It's like psychological warfare, kind of. I feel like it's like a form of torture sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, uh, it's going to be great. I'm very excited about those shows. There's only six. They're going to be really great shows. And uh, then we have time, you know, off. We have time to be in whatever time zone we choose to be in. So, but yeah, we're going to fly home on the 4th. We're going to do whatever we need to do on the 5th. And then we're going to fly to Spain. Uh, yeah, Spain on July 6th. That's exciting. So as far as touring, we're still only halfway through this year. What else get going on for the rest of the year? 
We are coming back to Europe, actually. That's all that it's looking like for the rest of this year in terms of touring. So this was the USA tour for 2018. <laughs> so I hope you're uh, here if you wanted to be here <laughs> at the Tempe show in Arizona. Um, yeah, we're going to Europe in uh, the fall. Um, very excited about that one because uh, it is, I believe it's a co-headlining tour and I'm excited to announce who we're doing it with. I think it's going to be great. It's something different. People won't be expecting it. Um, so stay tuned for that because that will be very fun to announce. And then, uh, I don't know, we've, uh, we've been looking at some studios. We checked one out on the way to the LA gig and it looked pretty awesome. Um, so even though we just released an album, definitely already making plans and thinking about that. That's what people maybe don't understand is it's been a couple years since you've really been writing with the intent of putting out a record. Yeah, this project uh, has, yeah, no one has written together since Denmark in 2016. So that's a couple years ago already. Yeah. It's going to happen, people. It's going to happen. Catch them while you can. There are only a couple days left on this tour. See them in Europe. This is a good chance. Thank you for spending a moment with us. Is there anything I missed? Anything else you want to talk about? think so i don't know when this is getting posted when we're, we're we're going to texas so in case this gets posted at that time we're going to fort worth uh houston and austin um austin yeah austin texas so i'm very excited to return to those places thank you much for your time tonight